Just off Heathrow's runway sits a building with a secret behind its glass doors. Tucked in the corner of the British Airways headquarters outside London is an Avgeek's dream. This is kind of a secret museum. People don't necessarily know it's here. One of the best kept secrets in the business. Our guide for this stroll down BA's memory lane, Jim Davies, spent the better part of four decades at the airline and the last 20 years volunteering at the Speedbird Heritage Center. He also gave Queen Elizabeth a similar tour in 2019, so this is truly the royal treatment. How big of a deal is a, is a visit by the Queen? The answer to your question is, it's mind-blowing. I shall never forget her walking down on the front of the building and even allowed me to, to, to crack a royal joke at her. What joke did you tell the Queen? Oh, Mom, um, I do wonder how you get through the security arch at an airport with your crown on. <laughs> really corny. <laughs> the British aircraft uh, with four... Davies likes to start with a model of the Vickers VC-10. A jet built in the UK that took Brits around the globe from 1964 to 1975, back when flying meant passengers in their Sunday best and hot meals with white coat service was the standard. All this comfort nonchalantly enjoyed nearly eight miles above the earth. This predates email. But it's pieces of history like this file, sealed for decades, that make this museum a true hidden gem. Inside it, all the work that went into arranging the 1952 trip, then Princess Elizabeth was taking to Australia. Now it was the sad homecoming of a young queen. When she became queen upon the passing of her father, King George. Queen Elizabeth II emerged. And check out the hand-drawn charts tracking the plane's progress and its abrupt return to England, including this royal crown above the flight. When you think of these people, making the arrangements for this flight, and more the point, making the arrangements for her sudden return flight back to London as Queen. It's just a, really, I just love looking at these sort of paperwork. It's quite unique. So this actual visitor's book. The Heritage Center is also uh, home is to the book. One of our treasures, I think. A very because unique piece of aviation history. The queen it's the guest the book that's accompanied every royal flight on BA for decades. And marking each occasion is a royal signature from Queen Elizabeth's travels with Prince Philip and their children to then Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Throughout this book, there are signatures, in this case, here's the Prince of Wales with Diana, and it's a wonderful record of royal flying. So this is your first flight. With one exception, when the Queen came to the museum. She sat down at a table in our display room. Shall I sign here? Yes, please, ma'am, if you would. You did a royals flight. I did, yes, the Queen. Lorraine Longden has been a flight attendant with the airline for 35 years. That probably was one of the highlights of my career, especially now she's gone. What stands out to you from that flight? When the Queen and Prince Philip arrived at the aircraft, she drove herself. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that because I was at the door waiting for them to come up and, um, and the entourage arrived and she was driving this Range Rover. Longden also had a front row seat to a different kind of history, the Concorde. Starting in 1976, British Airways, along with Air France, flew the supersonic passenger plane that could travel up to twice the speed of sound. Cruising at 60,000 feet, it could cross the pond to New York in a little over three hours with up to 100 passengers. But as you can see at the Heritage Center, you didn't get much of a view out of these tiny windows. You had to love it to work on it because um, it was incredibly small inside, but it was wonderful. It, every day, it felt like the first day, you know, when you're really excited, because um, there was no other aircraft like it. British Airways traces its history to the first regularly scheduled commercial passenger flight back in 1919, flying from London to Paris in about two and a half hours. Runway 27 right, clear for takeoff. The airline we see today was formed in 1974, combining British Overseas Airways Corporation and British European Airways. I don't know what day Among the displays here, isn't, isn't that great? a lunch menu signed by Winston Churchill. He dined on smoked salmon, braised York ham, plums, and a cheese plate. BOAZ jetted into high fashion. And some of the museum's 130 uniforms dating back nearly a century, including kimonos, saris, and this paper dress from 1967. The bonded fiber was said to be fireproof and worn on flights from New York to the Caribbean.
to give it a bit of a, a, bit of a holiday feel, whatever, whatever, uh, they, put the, they put the girls in this paper dress. It's actually made of paper. Uh, do, 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 do feel it. Uh, you, you, you have my permission. You have my permission as a, as a VIP guest. VIP guest. <laughs> and uh, rather ghastly shoes. The shoes are very green. It was a short-lived trend. But for Lorraine Longden, the entire place has the feel of family. Her dad and brother worked at the airline for 30-plus years. She met her husband at BA, and her son is also a flight attendant. What's it like for you when you walk through here? Uh, this is all part of my life, really. But you don't have to spend a lifetime at the airline to get in here. Admission is free. You just have to make an appointment online. You do have a proud history, and it's very nice. I'm very privileged to be able to share it. And don't forget to sign this guest book, the one reserved for visitors without a crown. For CBS Saturday Morning, I'm Chris Van Cleve outside London.